Today I'll be sharing with you my top 5 tips for passing CCNA or Cisco Certified Network Associate and at the end of this video I will share briefly with you my experience with the exams so you will know how many questions I got, did I have any labs and how difficult the whole experience of taking the exam really was. But before delving into those, let me provide you a brief overview of the significance of the CCNA exams. IT skills and salary report by Skillsoft places Cisco certification as one of the most desired certification on the market, together with AWS or Google Cloud certifications. When we analyze the job demand for CCNA, numbers speak for themselves. There are over 2,000 job opportunities across European Union, now 1,000 jobs in US and 1,000 jobs in India. So without a doubt, pursuing this certification is a worthwhile endeavor. My name is Simon and today I will share with you my top tips to pass CCNA in the first try. In this channel we talk about the cloud, certifications, networking, but you can also listen interviews with experts and try yourself at mock-up interview with my DevOps job interview series. Naturally, CCNA is just the starting point on Cisco extensive certification path. After mastering CCNA, you can explore various roads with, uh, for example, CCNP, Cisco Certified Network Professional, and the pinnacle of the expertise is achieved with the CCIE, an Advanced Networking Certification. On the parallel track, there is also Cisco newest ser series, Cisco DevNet Path, where the focus shifts into the Python, programmability, automation, like Ansible, with the very much application of the DevOps concepts in the network management. However, that's a discussion for another day. What we have to know is that it is widely recognized certification in the field of the IT and networking. CCNA certification validates the skills and knowledge required to install, operate, troubleshoot medium-sized routed and switched networks. Before we dive into my top tips, let me first give you an overview of exam itself so you know what is the main focus on. So the first domain is network fundamentals. This domain assesses your understanding of foundational principles of networking. It covers topics such as, for example, OSI model, TCP, Ethernet, wireless technology and networking devices. A solid grasp of these fundamentals is essential as it forms form the base for more advanced concepts. Then we have a network access. Well, the network access domains concentrates on the mechanisms for assuring authorized access to the network resources. That includes concepts such as, for example, VLANs, which is a virtual LAN, switching concepts, port security and authentication methods. Understanding how to control and secure access to the network access layer is a key focus. Then very important domain which is IP connectivity. IP connectivity domain evaluates your knowledge of IP addressing, subnetting and routing. It includes topics like IPv4 or 6, addressing, static and dynamic routing protocols and of course troubleshooting connectivity issues. IP services, the next domain. Here you will know everything related to the IP network. It includes topics such as for example NET, which is network address translation, DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocols, QoS and other network services such as for example DNS. Then moving on to security. It's a such a critical aspect of any network. The security domain assesses your knowledge of network security concepts such as for example VPN, which is virtual private networks, ACLs, access control lists or device security. Demonstrating the ability to secure a network against any various threats is a key component of this domain. Automation and programmability. This domain truly reflects the evolving landscape of um, networking, emphasizing the importance of automation and scripting in the network management. Topics include things such as, for example, APIs, Python, uh, Ansible or uh, Cisco SD-WAN. Understanding how to automate and leverage programmability is becoming essential in the modern network environment. Now let's explore my top tips to excel the CCNA exam in the first try. First of all, master the fundamentals really ensure a solid understanding of networking fundamentals as they form the basis of your CCNA exam. And by fundamentals, I mean, first of all, 
understanding the OSI model. The OSI or Open System Interconnection model is a conceptual framework that standardizes the functions of the telecommunication or computing system in the seven abstraction layers. Another domain that we truly need to master is the TCP IP protocol suite. So this is the protocol framework that powers really the internet. Knowledge of TCP IP protocols such as IP, TCP, UDP or ICMP is essential for configuring and troubleshooting networking. Understand how these protocols operate, the headers, the interactions, then of course subnetting. And subnetting in CCNA is a, such a foundational skill in, in the exam. Really practice your subnetting, be proficient in it. Understand calculating subnet and determining the range of IP addresses within the subnet. This skill is really crucial point for IP address management and official use of IP address space. Then we have a routing protocols. Familiarize yourself with the routing protocols, such as for example, open shortest path path first OSPF and understand its characteristics, how it's operate and when to use it. Routing is a really a key concept in networking and solid understanding of this protocol is super vital. Last but not least, of course, network devices and topologies. Gain knowledge about the various networking devices, such as for example, routers, switches, hubs and their functionalities. Understand different network topologies, including star, bus, ring or mesh. Knowing how devices connect and communicate in the various topologies is really essential for network design and troubleshooting. Tip number two, hands-on practice. And hands-on practice is a cornerstone of effective preparation for Cisco CCNA exam. Engaging in the practical examples will truly will help you to better understand how to work with devices, how to connect them or troubleshoot it. It really reinforces your theoretical knowledge that you might gain during the class. By actively configuring routers, switchers or other networking devices, you will gain much deeper understanding of the concepts covered in the exam. This learn by doing approach is really the best one if you really want to go for the exam and master the questions because theoretical examples or theoretical knowledge might not be not sufficient when you, for example, will be facing a lab. Diversifying your learning resources for Cisco CCNA exam preparation involve exploring a really a range of the different materials to gain a comprehensive understanding of a topic. Something that might be a bit surprising that I also use but podcasts can be also an excellent addition to your study routine. CCNA Focus Podcast often covers industry trends, real-world scenarios and experts insight offering a very different format of absorbing the information. Listening to podcasts and discussions and interview can really complement traditional study methods and provide, I would say, a fresh perspective on networking and the knowledge. Then, of course, other materials such as online classes on Udemy uh, really host a variety of the resources led by experienced instructors. Tip number four, connect the topics. One of the effective strategies to deepen your memory retention for Cisco CCNA is to start looking for the connections between the topics. So for example, instead of look for the topics in isolation, try to look at some kind of like a bigger picture. So for example, when I was studying for um, STP spanning tree protocol, I also really enjoy exploring how STP influence VLANs. Tip number five, practice tests. When preparing for CCNA exam, leveraging practice tests is a really key strategy that cannot be overstated. There are numerous online platforms that provide a range of CCNA practice tests, including those ones with the varying difficulties and uh, many different question formats. Platforms like, for example, Boson, YouTube, that you can just look up and see what type of questions, uh, what type of similar questions you might get during the exams. And now in this part of the video, I will also focus on my exam, how difficult it was, how many questions I had. So the first question, how difficult was the exam? And well, frankly, my impression uh, was that the exam was very fair. The questions were very much balanced between different domains. So if you really put your effort into studies, 
you should be good. How many questions do we get in new CCNA 301? There is no precise number that is published, but considering the allotted time of two hours, we can reasonably expect around 100 questions, give or take a few. There is a ballpark number, but based on my experience, which also includes the lab component, it was about 100 questions. And speaking about the labs, so are the labs a CCNA exam? Absolutely. CCNA exam does include hands-on labs. And according to my research, it usually features four performance-based labs, each containing three to four questions. And this assumption is, I would say, quite fair, because in my exam I also had labs that were part of the exam, but they were relatively straightforward. Labs, in my in my view, they are really the, the, the funniest and the most interesting part of the exam, because it truly validates ability to um, work with the networking. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe and let me know what other materials I should create for you. Thanks.